Welcome to the Process of Purpose podcast. We're here to help inspire and motivate people to find their purpose through the process of spirituality, health, and wealth using godly principles and values to break through to the life that God has called us to live. I'm super excited about this next episode. The title of this episode is Knocked Out, and we have Matt Escoto on the Process segment with us, and he's going to be sharing his story of hope, of how he overcame these bad thoughts that he had at one point of, of you know, just ending his life and not being here he felt like he was no use to the world and now just the amazing things that Matt Escoto is doing in the kingdom is super super motivating inspiring you know how how can you go from one moment not feeling like you need to be here to just changing people's lives and that's what Matt Escoto is doing and the reason we called it knocked out is because God literally knocked him out the night that he had these thoughts and it's a really just an inspiring story that that many people need to hear Matt is 21 years old so I'm sure there's a lot of people out there going through the same thing so share this with somebody it's going to be a great one and here's the episode the way I met Matt is at Hope Unlimited Church, yes, we sir. did, uh, at the time, was called Driven for More. Now it's called uh, Starting Point. And uh, basically, it's a four-week class that you go through. You learn about the church, and it kind of transi- transitions you into serving, uh, whether it be with kids, uh, experience team. Worship sh- team. Worship team. Yeah, I shouldn't have started. Uh, media. I shouldn't have named stuff, because I always <laughs> do that, bro. I'm like, every time I start naming stuff, I'm like, why? Uh, but we did have, like, a Super A team. Who do we have again? It was Jared, Sally, you, me. Uh, that's already. I think we had like another one or two people that also lead in like their ministry. So we had a dream team, dude. Yeah, dude, we, it, we were amazing. <laughs> it, it, it was actually really crazy to just see like, like out of that one dream for more. Like we're all leading right now in a yeah, capacity man. at the church. Like you said, you're leading high school. Yeah, I'm leading high school. I used to lead uh, middle school ministries. Mm. Uh, so that was fun. So since we don't actually have like a ministry on a Sunday, what I'm going to start doing on Sundays uh, coming this upcoming month is I'm going to uh, start s- actually serve in Starting Point. So I'll be able to teach in there. Really? Uh, yeah. That just happened like maybe a few weeks ago. So nice, excited. man. So, you, you, so you're just giving us all the good news in here. Yeah. I'm, uh, this is all you, the details. You, you heard it here first <laughs> on Process to Purpose yeah, every, podcast. People are going to want to know about this. <laughs> no, I'm joking. So, um, and then you're also interning at the church, right? Yeah. Interning. How's that going? It's 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 fun. I've been doing that for almost a year now, actually. Um, I've been going either once or twice a week, uh, depending on, like, with work and school and everything. Yeah. But, yeah, I just kind of, like, um, I get, like, the inside scoop on, like, being able to kind of see how our church runs from the, um, the weekly basis, see how meetings are handled, see how events are planned. Because sometimes we kind of forget that. Yeah. It's just a Wednesday or a Sunday that we think just magically gets put together. <laughs> but all the work that goes behind it from teams, from leaders, Definitely. like all the communication has to go through to just make an event happen. It's crazy. So it's nice. It's like stretching me definitely Nice to kind of uh, make sure what I'm doing is more structured instead of just, oh, I do it here and there every now That's and good, then. That's good, man. Yeah. And you're under Don Barrow, right? And, and so. The Don Barrow, yes. The Don Barrow. I'm under <laughs> the Don Barrow. I'm going to cut that piece out, bro, and just send it to him. <laughs> so he gets a little excited. Because yeah, the dude's like super humble. He'd be like, yeah, whatever, dude. The guy that does everything, man. Yeah, everything. He has like three or f- like four interns himself at the church because he has some doing media. He has like some doing worship. He has me doing the high school. So, yeah, and then you see him like uh, being the drummer on Sundays. You oh, know what I mean? On like, Sundays. And then he's like, somehow I see him with a camera in his hand. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, this Drumming guy, with a camera in his he hand. He just, <laughs> that is the definition of talent. The Barrow family is talented. Yeah. And we just had Ace Barrow on the last time on the on the podcast, and that was super awesome. So that 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 podcast is already up on the the Process to Purpose podcast. So go check it out. We're talking about gifts and talents. Yep. Um, but what do you do for uh, for work, man? Work right now. I actually am a server at Olive Garden. Nice man. Yeah, I make sure your breadsticks are nice and hot. Woo! Uh, your fettuccine Alfredo comes nice and Alfredo covered. Like I, I hook it up there. So if you guys want to go, let you guys know. Just. Ask me about the details. That's awesome, but, um, man. Actually, I'm only going to be there for like another two weeks. Got it. I just got a job at 24 Hour Fitness. Bro, you, you got it. Yep. Congratulations, man. Hour, so I'm excited for that. And share that quick story, man, because that's a super win right there. You went in for something else, right? Yeah. Well, actually, when I even applied, I applied on a Saturday and I got a call on a Monday saying, hey, you free for an interview on Tuesday? And I was like, uh, sure. Like, it's kind of fast. It usually never happens that quick. But, um... 
So I go for an interview that I didn't know because the manager like, was cutting off on the phone. So all I knew was I had an interview. I didn't know it was for a service rep to, like, to be in the front desk and everything. So the whole time I'm in this interview, I'm talking to them about sales, on like my sales skills, and they're kind of looking at me funny, and I didn't realize that <laughs> until the end when they were like, so we know you could do service reps, but since you want to do sales so much, we'll see if we can get you an interview <laughs> with our sales manager. That's and awesome. I was like, yeah, thanks, Like I would love to. Met the sales manager, asked me a bunch of questions, did like a little role play thing, nice. and I ended up getting a job. God's that's, good, man. God is good. That is awesome, bro. So you, that's I'm pretty sad, bro. You're not gonna be serving that hot bread anymore, then. Nope, not much. That's longer. good, man. That's awesome, bro. And it's all part of the process that you that you're going through right now. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, if you guys don't know, Matt's actually like super young. You couldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to tell by the way he speaks, but super super young. I mean, what, 21 years old? Yep. Just turned 21. So I mean, you guys are in for a super treat. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, we're gonna jump right into. It. Is that All right, okay? Sounds good. Let's so, do this. so really quick. Um, you, so, so people know where you were at one point in your life. Do um, you mind just sharing your your testimony with us, man? Yeah, I would love to. Um, Cause you weren't always this uh, like excited about life. You weren't uh, like this happy. Cause you look really happy, man. You see, the thing was, it actually did look just like this Got for it. like the longest time. Like in high That's school, good. like I was always someone where like people were like, oh, he jokes around so much. I've never seen him not laughing. He's just always happy about life. But um, I guess that's where it kind of like starts is that at school I'd be this cool per- like this like I was in a group of like people that were well known. Like they're always having a good time, always having fun. Like it wasn't even like doing bad stuff. It was just we're always involved with the school stuff and it was cool. Um, but I remember like even a little before in my freshman year class, um, there is this suicide um, prevention type class thing okay. going on. Nice. And I remember, like, it was like, oh, what an like, awesome thing for a school to, like, throw. And, like, I was, like, saying, like, statistics of, like, how often and, like, how many people in the room would probably be affected really? by like, depression or something like that. And I remember sitting there laughing, like, <laughs> that's not me, though. Yeah. Later on, um, it ended up being, I actually brought this, too. Yeah, go ahead, I, man. I saw this the other day. And this was actually, like, the band that wow. I got when I... Ended up having to go to the hospital for it. Really? Yeah, so it was January 27th, uh, 2013. Wow, man. When uh, it was a night where I kind of found myself in my room um, with, it seems like, everything that piled up in my life. Um, And it wasn't a lot. It was just that I wasn't very well with my emotions. I was kind of uh, someone that thought, oh, I don't need to deal with this right now. I can throw it in the bottle. I'll deal with it later. And then I kept throwing stuff in that bottle over and over and over until eventually it starts kind of leaking out. Yeah. So it was that night where um, I remember I was sitting at the edge of my bed, just bawling, straight tears, um, and thinking, like, man, like, this world seems better if I'm not in it Mm. rather than if I am. Like, I don't know what made me think that way, but um, it was just this idea of this could all be over so fast and I'll, everything will get better. I don't know why that word will always come to mind. It was just like, things will get better. Like, just just go through with whatever um, you plan on doing. And um, I remember I was going to, like, write my parents a note. Um, I remember, like, having that set on the desk. I remember um, having this whole thing planned out of, like, what I was going to do. Um, and it was crazy. Because right when I was at the edge of my bed, I remember just my hands, like, just, like, holding my hands tight. Just thinking, like, man, this is... I'm going through with this. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I woke up, and I was under my comforter, um, head on the pillow. Really? Uh, and I'm waking up on wow. January 28th, thinking, what just happened? Out of nowhere. Really? Yeah. Like, it really felt that, um, like, I got knocked out. And if you guys saw the title, Knocked Out, that's kind of what it has to do with it. Um, yeah, Definitely. I, I forgot even to share the title, man. I forgot to share that we're, that today's title is going to be knocked out, but that's why. Yeah, and that's that's why I, um, it was titled that I got. Call it, uh, I always say, Jesus got me with a left hook. But, um, yeah, man. And, yeah, and I, it was a crazy experience um, because it ended up me um, crying that morning when I woke up. Okay. Kind of ang- it was more of an anger cry. Because I was kind of... Uh, were you mad because like you yeah, were very, knocked out? I was very resentful of it in the sense of... Got it. I was saying, this isn't fair. This isn't fair. Like I, Everything was like good to go. And then um, mom's leaving for work. She sees me. And she says, what's wrong? 
and like I never felt the way I had it felt uh, the way like I felt um, when I had explained to my mom the whole thing that happened, and she was just telling me that um, oh it's okay like I won't go to work like we'll just talk today like we'll like yeah. we'll just spend some time, and I told her I was like I don't know if I can get lucky twice, mm. I don't know if um, I can't like maybe I won't go through with it today but what if I do tomorrow, yeah. what if I do the next day, so that's where I ended up having to get this at a hospital, for um that was there for a week kind of funny that i remember the date because it was close to super bowl super bowl sunday <laughs> close to super bowl sunday but um yeah i remember going through all that and then to see where uh god ended up taking me from it it's kind of just uh sometimes it still kind of like overwhelms me yeah no, i think about it and and you know what I, I really just thank you for for being super open man and and uh just willing to share that story a lot of people and, and, you know, in that situation, wouldn't be able to share it. But I know you're you're doing this to really glorify God and and really being thankful that God did knock you out that, at that point. Right. Because, yeah. I mean, you can't explain it. Yeah. There, That's the um, crazy thing. I wasn't tired. Um, and people can say, like, oh, you were crying. You must have been kind of like just like your body must have just been exhausted. Yeah. But I wasn't tired because I was still fully functioning. Like I was still able to stand up, walk around like I was like everything was normal. So that was a crazy situation to happen. Um, and it was one of those situations where, like I said before, like, oh, I, I got lucky. Like I wasn't lucky. I was blessed. Yeah, like, I definitely. was truly blessed definitely. Um, that God intervened with my plan mm-hmm. because he knew like his plan was greater. So that's good. Yeah, man. that's good. That's crazy. And so, you know, you're now you're, you're, you know, you're getting out of the hospital. You, you've experienced that. So now, like, how did you find because you, I mean, you obviously have to still kind of live with the like the thing, like, hey, you know what? I almost did this. Like, mm-hmm. so how did you like find hope through 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 Christ, man? Like, how did that transition happen? Well, I kind of like went through the um, the steps of like what they were telling me to do at the hospital. Okay, it was more of like, oh, just make sure you're going to therapy, and then like when you go to therapy, your therapist will tell you this. Uh, make sure you're doing this like every day, kind of like, oh, we could give you this medication if you want. I was like, I'm staying off the medication. Yeah. I don't want to make this worse. I've heard bad situations but um i was handling it every uh humanly way i could think of Mm -hmm. in the sense of i was like i i can fix this yeah i I made a mistake i can fix this though everything will be all right i know how to handle it i was very independent i know how to i can do it i got this Um, oh yeah we all know how that goes yeah so (laughs) i guess yeah i guess you can tell where it's gonna go from there but um it was a few years later that i would end up in the same spot in, the, in my room, I felt like it was the same night. Really? Yeah, I was in, I was in the same situation, and I was like, I don't know what to do. I did all these classes. I stopped going to therapy because I thought everything was better. Like I didn't like the therapist, and so I'm like, well, you don't have to stop coming. I just decided I'm good. I got it again. Yeah. Like, I felt like I was on my feet. Um, you got a hold of my life. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> and um, so I made the executive decision on that, and then um, I found myself in my room again. The same thing going on, the same conversation kind of like running through my head. And I was like, man, how did I find myself here again? And that one was a little more serious of a conversation because I said like, I, I kind of was like giving myself the idea that um, I did all the steps and they didn't work. Mm. So that means I should have gone through with it. Um, but this step, I guess I kind of took a little different because that same spot I was uh, sitting at the edge of my bed. I just turned around. I just dropped to my knees. I remember putting my arms on the edge of my bed now um, and just praying to God, really? crying, crying. Uh, and did you, did you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but did you have like a feeling that you were praying to God? Did you know you were praying to God? Or? Oh, I knew I, I was, I knew I was praying to God. Got um, it. I grew up in the Catholic church mm. when I was younger. I was always like, I went to the Sunday school and everything. Um, I did my catechism. I think that's what it's called again. But um, okay. yeah, so I, I knew, I knew who God was. Got it. Um, I just always had this picture of God as a boss. Hmm. It was kind of like, make your boss happy. Um, don't do what your boss doesn't want you to do. <laughs> do the right thing. Yeah, do the right thing. Behave. Um, yeah, behave. And if you do good enough, maybe your boss won't talk to you. <laughs> like, uh, But I guess that's what I kind of thought it was. Um, a whole relationship, no idea. Um, had no idea why I called him father if I didn't actually see him as a father. Hmm. Um, I had no idea why I was just... I had no idea of grace. I remember coming to the church and hearing the word grace, and I was like, all I know is this. I knew a girl named Grace before, but yeah, yeah, I yeah. never knew what grace was. Um, but, yeah, I, I fell to my knees. I was praying. And um, I guess I also grew up in this way that um, 
you don't pray for like a relationship or like you pray in like a communication i guess i kind of felt guilty because i remember praying and telling god like hey i'm back and um i guess mm. you know that i need something yeah because that feels like that's the only reason i come to you god mm. and a like, lot of people might feel that way right? yeah a lot of people that's may crazy. feel that way of kind of like um god i need something like you're like he's a vending machine like you just put in a mm. few codes and something falls out like yeah and i think that's where a lot of people may get it um kind of a little switched up than it should be yeah but yeah i remember praying and saying god i i, I know you probably hate hearing me when i come to you like this but um i don't know what you want i don't i, know, I don't know what like you want for me to, i don't know what you want me to do i don't know what you want um like what well, what next step i'm supposed to take yeah but god uh you know where i'm at right now you know this feeling i'm feeling because i can't even explain it to you um i just need something and this time it was very vague because um other than like other prayers i've had because like i'd be praying for specific things specific uh feelings but this was like god i need something and i just need it to be from you yeah i just don't know what it is i know you're going to deliver though um so then i'm sitting kind of anxious uh thinking like i don't know what it's going to be what if i miss it yeah um what if i don't know if it's from god what if it's just kind of waiting on it yeah like i'm i'm sitting there thinking and then i'm at like in my bed like oh now i have to be aware for like the next few weeks because like i don't know when god's gonna do something that just straight smacks me um but i know he's gonna do something yeah and just minutes after i get a call actually not call text i get a text from my friend wow um saying hey i don't know if you're busy this wednesday but we have access our youth and adult service um I'd love for you to be there. Wow, that's awesome. I know you've gone to the church um, for that last access that you went to with me, but um, I would love for you to come to this one. No specific message uh, like that she knew of inviting me. Um, I hadn't talked to her for a while, but I, I those that's a specific moment in my life where I knew it was God. Really? Like I feel like when when we say like God moves mountains in our lives, um, it really felt like that was a moment I saw God just pick up this mountain and just flick it away from me and kind of being like go yeah like you don't have to climb this mountain you just got to go through yeah he says i'm gonna make it as easy as i can for you yeah to find this place wow so right away i started texting my friend hey i'm sorry i'm busy i'm making up excuses because i was like i don't want to go to church but um uh, and a lot of people do that man. yeah i was like i can make up anything and then i was like oh god i just prayed for this yeah all right i'll be there um awesome. so yeah i ended up going to that access that night and getting saved and that's and that's really where your whole life turned around. Yep, because because it ended up that following Sunday, um, she needed a ride because she served, and that's when we had three services. So yeah, she served second and third service. Oh, so um, first service we go with each other because I told her I didn't want to go by myself, and she texts and she tells me like, oh, is it, like I don't have a ride home. Can you give me a ride home? And she's like, I just serve. I was like, okay, no problem. I didn't know she served two services. <laughs> yeah, so I stayed in second and third service in um, one of the kids' classrooms. And then I was like, I want to come back. And I ended up coming back, coming back, and then I ended up serving in that room later on. You know what's crazy? Because, I mean, a lot of people in, in, in kind of that situation, when they're feeling that way, they wouldn't even have the faith to pray. They're, they're kind of already over. So for you to have the faith and say, hey, you know what? I don't know what to do. i already gone through this. i already gone through the right steps. But now, like, I'm asking God where, like, like you said, it's kind of like a vending machine only when you need it. But mm -hmm. you have the faith. To still ask, and then when that text came, you you knew like this is God right here. Yeah, and I I think a big part of that may be um, pride, mm. and I think we kind of got this situation or this um, title of pride mixed up. Um, we think that we can't be proud of ourselves, that if we're proud of ourselves, that we're prideful, and that we like we're so scared to even use that word that sometimes we just somehow end up taking more ownership of it in a weird sense that um. We feel that we're sometimes too good to let people know that we're hurt. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that can come off in your relationship with God when, like, people say, like, lay everything down at God's feet. Like, you can give everything to Jesus. Um, sometimes you still want to hold on to some things because yeah. you feel like that's unfair to give it to him. Mm. Like, he can handle it. And I think that's where some people kind of that's really get, good, like, bro. yeah, like, they're scared. Like, oh, I'm scared to give Jesus my depression. Like, why would I want it? Like, that sounds a weird, like, sentence to say, like, oh, I'm giving someone this. But yeah. the reason you're giving it to him is because he's going to get rid of it for you. Yeah. It's like, like, I'm angered. 
give it to him. He yeah. will get rid of it. Like it's this, it's this thing. But sometimes you just want to let him know in the first place that you are going through yeah, things. Yeah, you're prideful. Yeah, yeah, and then you're like, no. I'm a man. Like, yeah, I'm strong. I'm strong enough to do this. Oh, that's a whole nother th- topic yeah. right there. Yeah, you, you know what I mean. And I think we all go through that because yeah. I've been there too. Where like that. I mean, I, they've heard it many times where I share like you know my testimony and how like I literally had to give it all to God because mm-hmm. like I had nowhere else to put it. Like you know, like hey, who who wants to hold this thing for me? Because I can't. Like, yeah. <laughs> and I I think that's the awesome thing about uh, your relationship with God is that in a sense takes up so much room that you can't have like the full benefit of like and love and joy of that relationship unless you get rid of some things yeah like you have to clean up your clean up your room to add this amazing new piece into your Mm. life and it's just you're thinking i've had this piece for so long i know how to work with this i know how to i know how to deal with it or know how to go around it i know how to go around it yeah Um, i know how to just like if i have this chair in my room and i just always put chair like clothes on it oh yeah always clean clothes um but um no, mine are dirty. <laughs> I'm just but I, I know how to utilize that chair, even if it's not using it for what it's actually meant to be used for. Yeah. Um, now I have this clutter in my room because I decided to keep something that I don't really need because I don't mm. actually sit in that chair ever. Yeah, now. definitely. But it becomes a hanger, yeah. like a giant closet for me. So I think the beautiful thing about this relationship with God that we can see together grow and stretch is that um, it pushes out the things we don't need. Yeah. It pushes out... God lets us keep the things we want. Um, not just that we want, but that he knows he gave us. Yeah. And takes away the things that maybe we thought we did. And he's like, no, I didn't give that to you. And you don't need that. <laughs> yeah, definitely, man. That's yeah. really good because there's a lot of us out there. And I've I've been one of them. So I'm not, we're not here to judge you. Nope. But there's a lot of people out there that are still holding on to these things that they don't need. Or they're holding on to relationships they don't need. You know, they 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 know they shouldn't be there or they shouldn't be around those people yeah but yet they're still there and it's sad cause, yeah uh, sometimes yeah. it's just we're comfortable with what we know yeah human nature doesn't like change no no um and god wants a lot of change for us and that work can be scary because you're like i don't want change like my life is fine just the way it is he says yeah you think so but yeah. i can make it so much better yeah man so and I see it all the time. Like I had to, you know, unfollow people unfortunately on social media because you know they I, I see things that they're doing, and I'm not judging them, but I'm like, in back of my head, I'm kind of like, man, like, can I just be a little normal and go do some of those fun things they're doing? But at the same time, like, I realize how blessed I am mm-hmm. and how graceful God is. I'm like, nah, man, I don't need any of that stuff because I got everything I need right here. And I'm in bed by like ten o'clock sometimes, and I see everybody <laughs> like, man, everyone's having a grand old time, man. That was one of the harder, harder things for me. Oh um, yeah, being someone that is of age where most people, are, most of my friends are still in college, are still out and about. Yeah, um, seeing these parties, seeing these things, seeing these events that they're going to, and I'm just like, God, can I go to like one or two <laughs> of these? Like, <laughs> what's the, what's this limit thing yeah. that we're doing? We're like, God, um, like, like is that even bad in the first place? Yeah. Um, I had to give up a lot. Uh, not a, a lot of relationships I did distance myself from. Yeah. Um, Sometimes you have to, man. Yeah. It was just. It wasn't to be mean. It wasn't to be hurtful or judge or judgmental. It was just that um, I knew my personal capacity, and I knew that if I stayed so closely around it, oh yeah, I'd probably fall into it. So oh, I was yeah. like, I just had a not yeah. in a selfish way, but look out for myself. But yeah, no, definitely. I had a, I had to make sure I was protected in a sense. And then, you know, there's people like, oh, well, you know, Jesus hung out with, uh, you know, tax collectors and sinners. I'm like, <laughs> yes, but Jesus wasn't tempted to smoke weed like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Jesus, never- like, Jesus wasn't going to be like, ah, just one hit. You know what I mean? And yeah. but that's that's what happens. And, uh, and I think it's important to um, surround ourselves with people that do need help. Yeah, definitely. Um, and sometimes... It's not like we're like only going to hang out with Christians now because I don't want to be near a sinner. Yeah. Um, one of the books I was reading is a, it's a book by Pastor Rich Wilkerson. The title of it is Friend of Sinners. Nice. And it was something where he was saying like Jesus did hang out with these people, but he, um, he knew his capacity. He knew mm-hmm. his, um, he knew what he was able to do, and of course he was able to do everything. He did it with a purpose. Yeah. So he, everything, everything he was doing was intentional. Yeah. He wasn't hanging out with these people because 
his disciples were being lame and didn't want to go kick it um, in the city. Yeah. He was meeting these people. He was talking to these people because he was intentional with everything he was doing. That that word stuck out to me so much in it. It's oh, just yeah. intentionality. Cause Huge. It could be in everything. Your career, your friendships, your relationships. Your marriage. You're, just, you're married. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not there yet, but yeah, intentional yeah. with everything I do in my marriage in the future. Well, not, so. not only that, but like even being intentional with like the relationship that you're in now. You know, yeah. it's like... You know, after a while, you're going to be like, all right, are we wasting our time here? What are we doing? It, not to be in a rush, but, like, that's a lot of people, they have to realize that they are in those relationships. They're like, this person's no good for me. Yeah. Like, I need to be more intentional. And me and my girlfriend uh, made that clear, like, right away, where it was yeah. something like, because um, I was really interning at the church. I was already um, leaving in a few things. So before we even got together, I was like, why can't this just be high school again where I can just get in a relationship and I have to give this girl guidelines <laughs> But in the sense, I had to tell her, like, these are my priorities in my life. Yeah. Um, this is what I value. This is what I hold on to. And um, these are what comes first. That's like, really I good. Don't, I don't want to change your life um, if you feel like you don't have to change. I'm not forcing to do anything. But um, if you're willing to join me on this awesome journey that I've already got to see some amazing fruit from, um, I promise you, you won't regret it. You're going to be awesome. able to see what God does in your life as well. And uh, thankfully, she didn't think I was a crazy person. Yeah, because I would have. No, yeah, I'm nah, just kidding. For right? real, man. I'm like, married to Crystal, bro. I, I, like, I had those guidelines were like from the beginning. You were the one that got the guidelines yeah, from like, here. <laughs> all right. We're going to do this. But, I'm in. I'm yeah. in for the long run, baby. Yeah, so it was something where I told her, um, we're just going to be intentional with what we do, where we plant our seeds, where we un- invest in our lives, and invest in our awesome, lives personally man. in our relationship. So That's perfect, yeah. bro. Yeah, she's been amazing with that. Perfect. So... I'm going to I'm going to transition into uh, a quick question that I have. Okay. It's uh how important is it to to reach out to these people? Like you know, kind of like how your friend did to you. In the simplest way it can save someone's life. Um and that that's And you're living proof. Heavy. Yeah, and I'm living proof of that that it's uncomfortable sometimes. Yeah. Um it could feel like a stretch for you. But oddly or not, um statistics prove that People are willing to go to church if they're invited. You're a numbers guy, huh? I, I love hearing these statistic things. And because it's stuff sometimes where it's like, I don't know how they, like, necessarily if they're super accurate or not, but they make me want to test them out for myself. Yeah. I like proving my Ooh. own statistics in the That's sense. That's really good. Where I'm like, all right, let me see in that case. And the people I've invited have come. And the people that I've, um, and it makes me think. Is that like that with everyone? So then you get in this momentum of like wanting to invite people. And I have a friend, uh, Matt Carlos, yeah. that invites people like crazy. Oh, yeah. And that's all he does. He does. He just he just invites them because he says that he's not scared to. And I'm like, yeah. man, that's, that's Yeah, because awesome. he has like a little click going, man. This you know? He's having his own and they're all ser- at one point. I know. They're all, <laughs> serving, they're all serving on our uh, experience team on the parking yeah. lot. So like this guy is really out there doing it. And, and good for him because like a lot of people are scared are shy to do it um and at the same time like i've invited people and then they come like weeks later after just throwing out an invitation right and then i remember i had uh, my buddy joe morales and espy they came to the church right and they're kind of told me no from the beginning oh we had a bad experience and i said perfect bro hey i love you Mm -hmm. you know no matter what i love you don't matter if you come to my church or not i'm gonna love you no matter what they came and it was during uh healing that healing service yeah and i was like oh my gosh you didn't think of the crazy you know what i mean Some crazy churches <laughs> yeah around yeah and then everyone's all like <laughs> touching each other and you know and then uh the next service they came to was the baptisms and i'm like oh my gosh they don't stop <laughs> they're, they're event people <laughs> yeah you know what i mean they, they just end up coming to those uh those services because mm-hmm. they were back to back and then but i thought to myself like so many people are, so many of us are worried about you know what's happening when like we already did our job by inviting them yeah, they just have to come and let God do the rest. That's the thing. It's not um, necessarily inviting them to when they get there. To um, You're not inviting these people to see them there that Sunday. You're inviting them to plant a seed in their life. Mm. Um, some plants grow faster than others. Oh, and that's man. something important to kind of um, realize when you think about when you're looking at the ground saying, why isn't this plant growing? Yeah. Because it takes longer. Yeah. Like you're not, you don't know the process that's happening under the soil. That's really good, bro. Um, this guy's 21 years old, guys. That's that's crazy. <laughs> that's awesome, man. But yeah, so it's it's important to um, invite people to, yeah. to invite people to just continuously throw seeds because mm. you don't know when those seeds will reap a harvest. You don't know when you will 
they will see an opportunity. And importantly, just because you're friends with these people or you're surrounded with these people a lot, you don't know what's going on in their life. Yeah. Like I said, um, I had a group of friends. I was, I, I thought that I was very close to them. Um, in a sense, I was, but there was only so much I allowed them to see in my life. Yeah. Because I felt that I still had to hide some things. You don't know what people are hiding. Yeah. Definitely. You don't know what people feel that they um, can't tell anyone else. You don't know how bad some people want in a relationship that is so healthy that they can say anything to that person. And that's God. I mean, yeah, definitely. That's what I'm trying to just show a lot of people um, through my story, through through uh, examples in my life to um, let them know that God doesn't want to hear the good things, just the good things. He doesn't want to hear just the bad things. Mm-hmm. He wants to hear everything in your everything. life. Yeah. So, yeah. Even if you're struggling with it, man. That's Even, super awesome, bro. Yeah. Awesome. So, what type of encouragement will you have to, you know, what, what type of encouragement will you give those people who who may be going through a similar situation? Um, the hard thing with this is, a lot of people would say, it depends on the person. Okay. A lot of people could say like, it, um, you don't really know the person until so you know their story. Yeah. But the thing is, I know my God. Hmm. Um, I know. That perspective may be different, but I know all of these things look so small to our God. Yeah. In the sense of, we feel that we're stuck with Him for the rest of our life, and He says, "I just need you to give it to me, so I can show you you're not stuck with it." Yeah. Um, God has a big hand. God has a big hand. God has um many eyes to watch. A lot yeah. of people. He's not just focused on one. He's not just focused on two. He leaves ninety nine for one. Yep. And it's. Um, and sometimes those people may feel like that one. They feel that they don't know how they found themselves in that situation. That they don't know. Um, maybe it was on purpose that they ran away. Maybe um, they weren't paying attention. Next thing I know, that everyone was gone. But they're in the situation where they're thinking, I bet God's a lot more focused on the bigger group than just me. And he will leave everything, put everything down just to let you know that he loves you. Yeah. So for those people out there, um, God loves you. Yep. Um, if you're listening to this, I just want to let you know that Jesus has a purpose and a plan for your life. Amen. And if you feel that it's done, it's not done yet. Yep. It could just be getting started. Yep. Because you can become a vessel to help someone. You can mm-hmm. become, you can have this opportunity to change someone else's life because it's sad. I mean, like when you see these um, suicides from a lot of famous people because they get put out there. Um, yeah. Such as like Anthony Bourdain, that, um, the guy that was traveling the world. And it looked like, to me, that was always my dream to travel the world. Mm. So when I saw this, I was like, he's living the life. And yeah. um, uh, Demi Lovato just um, overdosed recently. Um, Kate Spade. Kate Spade. Yeah. Um, and an athlete, DeMar DeRozan, which is kind of funny. He was actually just saying recently, he says, I wish some people would have all the money that they want just yeah. so they can see that it's not it's not enough. I've seen that, man. Yeah. He feels betrayed, you know? Yeah, and I, it, it's crazy to think that um, we think that there's a lot of physical things in this world that can bring us these things, but it comes down to the inner person in the sense of, and the way I see it is your relationship with God. Yeah, and it's crazy. That's exactly what I thought when I seen that. Yeah, because it's crazy to think that, like when I see all my friends having a lot of fun, I, I'm not always necessarily proud but i'm like you know you you do what you want like you yeah like i'll invite and everything but you do it's your life um yeah but when it comes down to it i have no um i don't, I'm, I don't shy away from letting them know what helped me yeah definitely um I, what carried me out of my pit but yeah because you don't go around saying hey you need jesus like yeah you know what i'm saying because we're not judging people yeah, and but that could come off scary to someone yeah, oh, yeah. just yelling at them that if you're not saved, like, like what was, what was one nice crazy person's sign I saw? It said, like, uh, turn or burn? <laughs> Something nuts. <laughs> when I was like, how That's... would that push me into a church? Yeah, like, how is that helping anybody? That's, like, I'm like, wow, that is insane to yeah. think. Someone's going to be like, oh, I don't want to burn, so I'm definitely going to turn. Like, yeah. no. <laughs> like, to think i really want to know what he's what he's doing yeah because people don't want to know these things to know what they shouldn't do or what um avoids them from the bad things it's 
they don't care about that as some people for their life because they're already kind of like in this weird situation of like focus on other things. But what I feel that everyone does want is love. Yeah, definitely. And I think that's the main thing that I found in God in my relationship with Jesus mm. that it's nothing but love. Yeah. It's just love, love, love. Um, it may come in ways I don't expect in the sense of like, Something happens, and I'm like, what's going on? God's like, oh, I closed that door for you. Yeah. He's like, because I'm about to open a bigger one for you. Amen. You just were stuck in that doorway. Yeah. So sometimes, good. like, you're thinking, like, God, like, you're throwing your tantrum on the floor, like, no, I needed that. I needed yeah. this. And he's like, you don't even understand how amazing of a plan I have for you. And for this plan to fulfill itself, that needs to stay back there where, where you yeah. found it. Yep. So that's, yeah, that's good, man. So my advice, when it comes down to um, to people out there, when I'm saying you're loved, um, it's not just a little filler thing. You really are loved. Yeah. Um, you do have a purpose, and that Jesus cares about you. That's awesome. Just man. so so much. Definitely, man. That's really good, bro. I I really thank you for just sharing this again, man. This is super awesome. Awesome. Not easy to do. Uh, we are going to close out with a couple of questions. Okay. Um, so these are going to be kind of rapid fire. We're not going to get too much into them, but they're just kind of fun and uh, just people get to know a little bit more about you. Sounds good. All right, man. Uh, so let's see. Um, I got it right here. Okay. So if you can go back in time, and you probably have already shared this, but if you go back in time to any age and give yourself just, you know, some information or some type of idea what age and what would it be Ooh. you can't change anything you can't change anything just tell myself something not change you, anything though? you can't change anything the outcome nothing is just say hey you know be aware or you know uh you know love this pr- whatever the case is what's one tip that you would give yourself and at what age it's a hard one Ooh. huh oh man where would i go with that i would say actually it's kind of hard because you're so so young still, but yeah, I guess I don't have that much opportunity, like more uh, that many ages where I could go back yeah. to. Um, okay, an interesting one would be in fifth grade, my grandma had passed away. Okay, and that was someone that like was just love herself. Mm. She was just a walking form of love. Um, so when she had passed away, it hit me pretty hard, and I felt like that was the first thing I threw into that sense of like what we talked about before the bottle. Um, I threw that. That was the first thing I threw in there, saying like, "I can only be sad for this long. Mm. Don't don't drag it out." Um, so, I think I would go back around the age before and kind of just let myself know um, to kind of feel free to express myself. Awesome. To kind of uh, to feel emotion. It's not bad. Um, that's really good, bro. Someone can cry. A, a guy can cry. Yeah. It's not something that's should be weird. Um, you can feel emotion. You can feel sad. So. I, I that's what I would tell myself. Wow, bro. See, man, that was good, bro. That was really good. I don't man. know if fifth grade me or would understand that, but well, oh my god, like, you want me to cry? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you want me to do what? And just have fifth grade me like punking me. Like, yeah, right. You cry? Like, like yeah. So and and it's funny because Matt always actually talks about like uh, Crystal and I's future kids that they're just gonna be punking on Matt. Oh, that's, I'm nervous <laughs> for it, man. I feel they're gonna trip me and like, just like, and and, it, and it's and we didn't share this before, but Matt's like not like the huggy huggy type of guy. You know I what know. I mean? He's super awesome. He's lovable, but like. I'm the type of guy that, like, hugs you and shakes you up and grabs you, you know? And Matt's probably like, bro, get off me, you know? Three years in, I'm, like, 50% of, like, used to it. Yeah, 50%. So, yeah, yeah. I'm getting there. I'll be a hugger in, like, the next few years. I promise you that. The, the other day, uh, well, last Sunday when uh, Pastor Robert was talking about, like, side hugs. Oh, man, that one was... And I was thinking of you the whole time, bro. I felt targeted. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, like... I give side hugs all the time. Yeah, and then so after service, I seen him. I said, bro, give me a full hug. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hugging guy, bro. Awesome. So um, next one. What's your favorite movie? Uh, something that, you know, you can just watch over and over. One movie, man. Uh, you know what? This is... I don't know if you know this. This might blow your mind. My favorite movie is Forrest Gump. I saw your uh, your podcast before, and I was like, "No way!" Yes, there's just so much in Forrest Gump that you can get. Like every time you watch it, there's like something else that's funny. That you have you to watch know. it like thirty times to actually get it. Bro. I like wasn't 
it wasn't until like my junior year when I was watching it, and then when he's like, "Oh, Lieutenant Dan invested in that fruit company," and I looked, and yes. I was like, "It's that Apple logo." Yes. It took me forever to realize that. So I feel like if I watch it still, like I'll find new things in it. It's a very quotable movie too. Oh yeah, so that's always fun. My favorite part is when uh, they're going. He goes, you know. It, Oh, man, I'm going to blow it, but he goes, you get all type of rain. He goes, you got the sideways rain, the big old fat rain. And he goes, you can even get rain from underneath and it's <laughs> water splashing. Yeah. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great movie. Uh, yeah, that's I just, awesome. I man. loved it when he plays for Alabama and he just kept running through yeah. the tunnel and just was just gone. You're just, like, See, and uh, that's why we like each other, bro, because Forrest Gump, man. Not many people would say that, to no, be honest. It's just there's so much about them. You could watch it from any part, yeah. and you could still watch it all the way through. Yeah, just, man. Oh, it's a great movie. That's so awesome, and he just did it all, so that's yeah, why I want to be like Forrest Gump. I'm not the smartest man in the world, but this dude did it all, you know what I'm saying? I may not be a smart man, yeah. Jenny, but I know what love <laughs> is. Man, good old Forrest. Good old Forrest. All right, awesome. So, uh what what would you say uh, your weakness is? I know I'm going here, man. Hmm. We're going a little over, but this is good stuff, man. What would I say my weakness is? One weakness. You know, and it could be like a, something that's... I, I don't want to say like like a, like an interview weakness where it's like, oh, I just, I, I'm such a hard worker. Like I want to give like a legit one where I could think of... Um, I, th- I told you I was going to throw you off with these questions, man. This one did get me. I think I'm someone I'm someone that's still very independent. Mm. Um, I may not be that way in my emotions because I'm like able to handle that with like God and everything in my relationship. But I'm very independent when it comes to working. Mm. Um, there's a lot of times where I feel like I could just be like, I'll handle it. I could do it. I could do it myself. Yeah. Like, So sometimes like, if you catch me like at a youth night, I'll be setting up the, like, the event early myself yeah. just because it's easier for me. Because sometimes you I don't, do it your way. Yeah, like it's yeah. Because I'm not, I'm still working on my leadership skills in the sense of communicating to a team to be you, able to handle multiple things. Yeah. So um, sometimes I still kind of like a downfall where I'm just doing it myself. Sometimes when people offer, it feels a little easier. You are but, uh, underdone for sure. It's yeah. Done, same thing. Yeah. No, it's just like <laughs> I'm like I can do it. I can do. It, I can do this. And then sometimes I find myself holding too much. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, now I need help or something's gonna break. So yeah, that's that's my weak- okay. That's my weakness. I'm too independent. I need to work on that though. Perfect. Not me, man. I wish I could just delegate everything. Like, oh. can someone just uh, set up this podcast? Can somebody, uh, you know? Yeah. And I just told you what, what, everything I have to do for the actual podcast. It's a lot, guys. It yeah, it's a lot for this. And uh, so I mean, but I love it. And I, again, I do this to to help people out. And I hope it helps somebody today. Uh, one last question: If you had one gift or talent, and it could be anything, what would it be? I think that would be, I think this one's going to match up with yours again. But not only being able to sing, but I wish I could, like, play instruments. Mm. Like, there is no language to an instrument. Like, you can dance. Like, if someone in, like, Europe is playing an instrument, like, that doesn't affect this barrier between the two of you. If anything, it, like, creates a bridge. So, to me, instruments have been able, like, to blow my mind to think that. So, um, same here, man. If I could learn, like, a specific one, I think I'd say piano. Which is weird because there's like a piano here, there's a piano at church. Like I'm surrounded by them. Yeah. I guess I'm just not putting in the work. So. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm I'm just music illiterate myself, so that's probably. I, th- I think I might just blame that the two then because I don't know why I haven't, but that's something I one day will learn. Not just um I want to do, but I will play an instrument. I just don't know by when. Love I it. I gotta create a goal for love you. Love it, man. I love it, bro. Do it, man. And it's funny because you're saying that and Pastor Robert. Uh, you know how I sit behind Pastor Robert in uh, mm-hmm. second service, so. Pastor Charlie, uh, Don, and and Pastor Rob, they're all jumping around, and he kind of points at them to like jump around with them during the like mm-hmm. the worship song, because it was one of those jumpy songs, mm-hmm. you know. And I'm like, bro, I got no rhythm, <laughs> like I have <laughs> zero rhythm, like I could barely keep up with the clap here. And you want me to jump around to the beat? That's no my pet chance. peeve on the Sunday. Like <laughs> I try to just ignore it, but when this person's just like, yeah, like oh man. I- I'm glad I don't sit next to you then, bro. Yeah, bro. That makes me itch. (laughs) No, I just I just stand there with my eyes closed, my hands up, like, all right, I'm just gonna be here in the presence of God. Don't clap because you're gonna mess it up for everybody. That's where it's at. Just if you don't know the rhythm, just hands in the air. I'm giving this to God too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. (laughs) All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, man. I think this has actually been our longest podcast, and it's been just full of a lot of good stuff, man. 
I'm going to I'm going to have trouble chopping this one up like I did with uh, Aces. I had trouble chopping that one up, uh, but I am going to chop this one up. Um, I shouldn't have said that because now I got to do it. Uh, but <laughs> again, Matt, thank you so much for being on, bro. Uh, I'm really, really just thankful that you shared this story. Uh, I'm sure somebody out there that's listening is really going to get affected by this. And, you know, maybe I don't know if it's they, you know, they go with to our church or maybe another church, but uh it's not really about going to church. It's about having that relationship with Christ. Yep. So right on. super awesome. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out now. Um, again, man, if nobody loves you, Jesus loves you. He's got it, man. Thank you.